Praise the Lord, friends. I am so glad that you're connected with us. I am telling you, we've got a special broadcast today. I'm going to be sharing something in a different way than I've ever shared it before. And I believe as a believer, this will liberate you. This will free you. This will give you a picture of what you've been given in Christ. As an unbeliever, it'll show people that they're getting robbed. They're letting the devil cheat them. And you know what? A lot of believers are letting the devil cheat them because they aren't walking in what God's given them in Christ. We've been teaching all week on our authority in Christ. So let your friends know about this. Share this with them. But, you know, tell them to tune into the broadcast. This will bless them and touch them. Now, we began this week talking about authority. And we begin in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to verse 20, where Jesus says, all authority, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe my commandments, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this age or this world. And so until we get to the end of this age or this world, we are to be going in the authority of Jesus. We are to be teaching people, baptizing them into who God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost are, making disciplined students of the Lord Jesus, disciples, Christ followers, and we are to be teaching them how they can walk in His God-given authority, observing His commandments. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, we have to realize that God, when man was created, God created man with authority. And we, we looked in Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. After God created the heaven and earth, he created the sun and the moon, the stars, the trees, and the birds, and the bees, and, you know, and, and all the fish, and all the animals. And then he, he created man and put him in, in a beautiful garden. And, and we step into this story at the creation of man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, and God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. You see, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost were all there at creation. Let them have dominion. God created man to rule and to reign over the fish, over the birds, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over all the creeps. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. He gave them an assignment. He said, And subdue it, have dominion over the fish, over the birds, over everything that moves on the earth. Not only did He give them assignment, He gave them something to do it with. He gave them authority and gave them ability. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is on the face of the earth, and every tree in which the fruit yielding seed to you it will be meat. So they were empowered to prosper. So God gave them authority, God gave them ability, God gave them responsibility. He created this beautiful garden, put man in the garden to dress and to keep the garden. And he, he gave him only one command. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For he says, in the day that you eat thereof, you will surely die. Now, Satan came. You know, paradise. Everything's beautiful. Everything's good. But then Satan comes. It says in Genesis 3, the serpent was more deceitful than any beast of the field which God made. He twisted the word. He, 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 he lied about the word. He got man to doubt the word. He outright con contradicted the word. Eve ate. She was deceived. And then Adam, she gave to Adam and he ate with her. Now, Adam knew what he was doing. We read in Timothy that Eve was deceived, but Adam knew. So, Adam subjected his authority, actually gave his authority, gave his dominion over to the devil. But immediately after man sinned, lust of flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life entered in. Man sinned. Satan gained, got one up on him. God came in the midst of that situation, and God gave them promise, the first promise of redemption. Genesis 3, verse 15. The seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. It shall bruise his heel. 
right? And not only did God give them the promise of redemption, but God made provision for them. God covered their exposure. God clothed them with coats of skin. Praise God, and, and, and clothe them. So he, here he was, God covered their exposure, but, but he, he, init, he immediately set the plan of redemption. The Bible is a book of redemption. You see, the Bible begins in paradise, and it ends in paradise. The Bible begins at the tree of life, in the, in the garden with God, and, and the Bible ends at the throne of God, the river of God, the tree of life, in paradise, in the presence of God. In fact, Revelation chapter 2, I think it's verse 7, says to him who overcomes will I give to eat of, of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. But we're going to go into this and we're going to read into history, you know, about a thousand years before, before Christ. So Genesis chapter 1, right, the, the creation is about 4,000 years B.C. Now, some Bible scholars teach that there was a split between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. You can believe whatever you want to believe about that. There are some very credible Bible scholars who believe that. But we know that the, the original creation of Adam was about 4,000 years B.C. Then, then we see in the life of David in Psalm chapter 8, about 1,000 B.C., so Abraham lived about 2,000 B.C. David then lived about, four, uh, about 1,000 B.C. So 3,000 years later, David's asking this question in Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you made him a little lower than the angels. Now, when it says that God made man a little lower than the angels... That word for angels in Psalm 8, 5 is Elohim. It's the same word that's used in Genesis 1, verse 1, when the scripture says, in the beginning, God, Elohim, it's a plural name for God, created the heaven and earth. So it says, you made him a little lower than God and crowned him with glory and honor. You made man, God created man to have dominion over all the works of your hands. And you put all things under his feet. You see, God gave man dominion, told him to subdue the earth, put all things, in, all the sheep, all the cows, yes, all the beasts of the field, all the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the sea. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. Why are you so thoughtful of man? Because when God created man, God created man just a little bit lower than himself. God made him a little lower than Elohim. So we can see, we're going to call this heaven. And we're going to say this is the Father, right? We're going to say this is the Son. at his own right hand, and this is the Holy Ghost, right here, right? Where did God create man? God made man, right, just a little lower than himself. We're gonna say that this is Adam. And this is Eve. God made him just a little lower than himself. They, they, were, they had a glorified position of authority. Now, when Satan came in the garden and man sinned, what happened? Satan came, right, and he usurped authority. He got over here and he lied to Eve, right? So we don't have red and it would be hard to see it with this ink anyway. But we're going to say this is the devil, okay? We'll, we'll make him with horns and a tail, although the devil usually doesn't come with horns and a tail, that might look like a, like, you know, we're going to make him sad because he is sad. He is a sad case. We'll make him with a pitchfork. He didn't come like that, actually. He came like a serpent. We should draw him like a serpent. He came as a serpent. So we'll draw a snake, right? He came as a, you know, and maybe then snakes could stand up because it wasn't until they were cursed that they had to crawl in the dirt for the rest of their lives. So we're going to say he's a snake and he came and he was very deceitful. He was the most deceitful of all. We read that in Genesis chapter 3. And he gave to Eve, Eve this fruit of the tree. What was it? It probably wasn't an apple. You know why it probably wasn't an apple? Because the Bible says that we are the apple of God's eye. More than likely, the fruit that gave, uh, the serpent gave Eve 
was just an old rotten fig. So we'll make it old. It's probably old and rotten because the devil promises something good. He doesn't give things good. He gives evil. He is evil. He does evil. Everything about him is bad and evil and deceitful. But he gave to Eve and she ate. And then she took this fig and she gave it to her. Now you say, why do you? Well, because Jesus cursed the fig tree, right? You can read about that in Mark chapter 11. And not only did Jesus curse the fig tree when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when, when they ate, they, after that, sewed fig leaves together to hide themselves from the presence of God. Now, this is all supposition, but I, I want you to get this picture. Satan came, and what happened to Adam when they did this? Adam and Eve fell, right? And, and, and they fell down to here, down to this low level. So we're going to draw Adam and Eve. They're down here, right? Adam and Eve. They fell to the lowest level. They lost their God-given authority, right? And so, you know, they weren't so happy anymore. They were probably a little bit sad. But anyway, this is Adam and Eve, and they're on a lower level because they've given their authority over to Satan. Now, Satan has usurped authority, but he, he's operating where? Over here. So, But now he's not like that because he, he had to crawl in the dust for the rest of his life in the form of a serpent. So Satan's in this level, mankind's, and Satan has some authority. But what did Jesus do? Now I'm gonna go to Hebrews and I'm gonna read the, the rendition of this from the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter two. Hebrews is a book all about what is better in the new covenant. And, and what is Hebrews is saying is we have a better covenant established on better promises. And what made this promise better was Jesus. So I'm going to just turn there for a minute to Hebrews chapter 2. And we're going to begin to read about this. It says in verse 5, okay? For unto the angels he, he has not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. But in one certain place he testified, saying, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you visit him? That We read that in Psalm chapter 8, verse 5. You made him a little lower than the angels. Now when Hebrews says angels, remember Psalm 8, verse 5. The Hebrew word for angels in Psalm 8, verse 5 is Elohim. You made him just a little lower than God himself. So man's original position right under God himself, right? Till he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then they fell from this position to here, right? To the lower position. So he says, and you crowned him with glory and honor. So God made man, now they were like his heavyweights, weighty with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands, right? Man had authority over the earth. You put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he put nothing that is not under him, but we see now the things not put under him. Now, when it says in Hebrews 8, verse 7, that he made him a little lower than the angels, the word for angels is angels, okay? So what is man? Man was created the, the highest of God's creation. If you study the creation again in Genesis chapter 1, God goes from lower life to higher life. Every aspect of life that he creates gets higher and higher. And man is the ultimate of God's creation. So man falls, right, when man eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And in Psalm 8, 5, he's a little lower than Elohim, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? And and. He's put, made a little lower than the angels. The word for angels in Hebrews 8 verse 7 is angels, angelos. What is Satan? Satan is a fallen angel, right? He's the archangel, right, of praise. When you study Ezekiel chapter 28 and Isaiah chapter 14, Lucifer, son of the morning, the archangel of praise. So man lost his glorified position through sin, through missing the mark, through disobeying God's commandment, and he fell to this lower position. He was a little lower than God himself. Now he's a little lower than the angels. Now, let's read on in Hebrews chapter 2, verse, verse 7. Talking, this is actually talking about Jesus. 
And he said, you, you put all things under his feet. This is man's original creation. But then he talks about Jesus in verse 9. But we see Jesus. We need to get a revelation of Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels. Again, when it says angels. So Jesus came from heaven, right? He's at the right hand of the Father. And I might have got the hands wrong. All right, I maybe should have had Jesus over here. But we're going to take Jesus from heaven. And Jesus goes from heaven. He goes down here. To, to humanity, right? And, and Jesus comes down on our level and Jesus comes to the earth and he lives on the earth, a sinless, holy, perfect, pure life, and yet he dies on the cross for our sin. So we see him, and he, what, what's happening when he dies on the cross is he's completely identifying with humanity. That's what Hebrews is talking about Hebrew, here in Hebrews chapter 2. He did not take the nature of angels, but he took the seed of Abraham. And he comes down to our level, and he completely identifies with us. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, Paul says, He who was rich became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. What he's talking about is Christ's absolute identification with man. I believe this is what Jesus accepted when he was baptized. You see, he had been reading, he'd been studying what God said about him. And when Jesus was baptized, what he did is he identified with us as human people. And God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I believe that when Jesus did that, when Jesus was baptized by John in the River Jordan, he was fully identifying with humanity. He was identifying with the death that he was going to die. He was identifying with what he was going to do. And so God said, I'm pleased with him because Jesus chose. He learned obedience by the things he suffered, the scripture says. So he chose to identify with humanity. Now, when he does this, what happens? We see Jesus, Hebrews 2 verse 9, made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste of death for every man. Jesus took our sin. Jesus took our death. For it became him for whom are all things, right? All things were created by him and for him, by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he, Jesus, who sanctifies, and they, humanity, who are sanctified, are all of one. Jesus became a flesh and blood body. Okay, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name to my, the, my brethren. In the midst of the church, I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. For as much then as the children, talking about humanity, are the partakers of flesh and blood, he, Jesus himself, took uh, likewise took part of the same that through death the reason Jesus had to come in a physical body is so that he could die through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and free us deliver us who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage for he did not take on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Right? He was up here with God where we were. We, he was at the right hand of the Father. He came down to the earth. He became, he was made, we were just a little lower, created a little lower than God himself. We fell, man fell. When Satan came up here and lied, usurped his authority, man fell to this position. And Satan had some dominion, some authority, stole, usurped humanity's authority. We were somewhat under, you know, some dominion of the devil. But Jesus came at this level and did no sin. Jesus came as a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. Jesus took our sin. He took our death. He took the seed of Abraham. And in this condition and in this position, he never sinned. Yet he became a sin offering for us. And when he died, he took our death. Praise God. So now when we come and we surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, when we bow our knees to Jesus and surrender to what, for, to what he did for us at the cross, right? When we bow our knees to Jesus and surrender to what he did for us 
at the cross, then, then we, in, in doing that, Jesus raises us up. This is what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, he by the grace of God tasted death, but then he raised us up and he, he restored us to our position of authority. And so now we have man restored to his position of authority through Christ, right? Hallelujah, we're happy again, right through Jesus. Hallelujah, I understand there's no male nor female in the spirit, glory to God. We're all good, happy, strong, healthy, whole people in Jesus. Hallelujah, okay? Now, we're restored to this position of authority and where's Jesus? Jesus is seated in the heavenly places at the right hand, praise the Lord, of God the Father. I wanna write this right. He's at the right hand of the Father in, in the highest of the heavens and we're right, we're right here. The Holy Spirit's right here with us, praise God. Right next to us, the Holy Spirit goes from the presence of the Father, Son to us, reveals the plan and the purpose of God. And where's the devil? I said this the other day. I said, we used to watch these films and we had, you know, an angel over here and a demon over here. And, and it's like you choose, but, but did you know what? You have to take a step down out of your glorified position in Christ, even to get involved in the devil's mess. Here's the devil. The devil is under our feet. Praise God, he is a defeated foe. You see, Jesus stripped the devil of authority. Satan has no authority, has no power. He doesn't have power over a born again man. The only authority that the devil has over a born again man, over somebody who knows their position in Christ is deception. And if, he, if you are living in deception, he has authority over you. But when you bow your knees and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ, and Jesus is in heaven, you are, you are returned, restored to a position of authority in Christ. And we rule and reign from, with Christ from a God-given position of authority, and the devil is under our feet. Now, I'm going to read some more scriptures that go along with this so you can see what I'm teaching you is the truth from the Holy Bible. Thank God that's what I have is the Holy Bible. It's actually the King James Version. My daddy loved the King James. Okay, so we're going to go right over here to Colossians and we're going to read in Colossians chapter 2. It says, as you have received. Remember, we bowed our knee to Jesus. Now we surrender to Jesus. Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him. Rooted, built up, established in the faith that you've been taught. Beware lest any men spoil you, cheat you, rob from you, take from you that which is rightfully yours. Through philosophy, vain deceit, tradition of men, the basic principles of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. We are complete through Jesus. Jesus Christ. Notice if we go on down, it goes on down and says this in verse 14, verse 13. Let's start in verse 13. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, has he made to live together with him? Where are we? We're seated in heavenly places in Christ, having forgiven you of all trespasses. You have been forgiven. What gave Satan dominion? What gave Satan authority? Sin. But because Jesus forgave you for your sin, Satan does no longer have dominion and authority in your life. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing to, it to his cross. Jesus took our sin, took the penalty for our sin, nailed it to his cross, paid the price. Verse 15 says, and he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. So not only is Jesus Lord of heaven, creating all things, Lord of earth when he walked on the earth, when he had all authority on the earth over sin, over sickness, over lack, over death, over disease, over everything, rose from the dead victorious. But he is authority in the grave went and conquered the devil for us and, and triumphed over them. Now I want to read one more scripture back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3 through verse 6. I want you to notice what this says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Among whom, speaking about in the world, we had our lifestyle, our behavior in time past, fulfilling the lusts of our flesh, desiring the flesh of the mind, and were by nature children wrath. We weren't saved. 
But God, who is rich in his mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when he, we were dead in trespasses and sins, has made us live together with Christ. He raised us up, made us sit together in heavenly places. By grace are you saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where are we? We are restored to a position of authority through faith in Jesus Christ. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where is the devil? The devil is under our feet. Satan is not who he used to be. He doesn't have authority over us. He, we have to take a step down out of this glorified position in Christ to even get in the devil's mess. It's not like the, the the devil's over here and the angel's over here. No, the devil's under our feet and Jesus, we're, we're seated in heavenly places with him. And the Holy Spirit comes and brings the truths that are the fathers and sons and shows them to us. And we walk out our God-given direction and plan in Christ. Praise God. Friends, I hope you're enjoying this broadcast. I have been teaching from my series, Our Authority in Christ. We would love to get these teachings to you. If you begin to understand your authority in Jesus Christ, it will absolutely change the way that you live your life. You see, because we are not under the circumstances. We are not under the dominion and the domain of the devil. Satan is the God of this world, but Jesus is Lord over heaven, over earth, and over the grave, and he's our Lord, and we've been given authority in him. When you begin to understand that, it will change your life. If you have never received Jesus, I invite you to surrender your life to the love of Jesus. Give us a call today. We would love to hear from you. God bless you. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Go to www.lawsonpadu.com or write us at PO Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.